Hi friends, welcome to Bella Stitchery. Today is all about printables. Tips, techniques, how I make my layouts out of them, answering all of the questions you may have, hopefully. If you have other questions, leave me a comment. I will try to answer those for you. I work as an ambassador for several printable companies online. One is The Handmade Club by Shabby Art Boutique. They have a monthly kit. It's available on the 15th of every month, brand new theme, brand new designs, and they are adorable. So whether you like to do junk journals, layouts, cards, or if you just like having printables on your desktop, as I do, <laughs> check those out. I'll have a link to their website. This month, which is February's 2021 kit, is all about this vintage baking, pies, macarons, cakes. It is fabulous. I really love this quilted honeycomb. I'm going to show you what I've done with that because I haven't used this kind of print before. But I also love that they include kind of staple patterns. Like you could use this or this general like kind of postcard ephemera look for any season or style. So that's always fun. Look at the floral. How adorable. Gingham. Love gingham so much. Maybe to an unhealthy degree. This is adorable. I love this kind of layered look where it looks really old, aged. You have the kind of combination of prints there. Recipe cards. Then there's these sheets that almost look like their own collage. You could just frame this. Look at this. How cute. I love this with the strawberries and there's a strawberry cupcake recipe on there. There's also this kind of like faux stitching kind of banner collage string just awesomeness I love the color palette I've cut out several things already look at this rolling pin how cute is that so one thing I wanted to show you let me show you what I did with this check quilted pattern because I had a lot of fun with this I actually cut this apart I didn't use this as a full sheet for any of my projects I fussy cut each of these quilted sections so that I could layer them onto my 12 by 12 in how I wanted. So let me show you what I did there. Here's one page. How cute. Okay, I just need to whew, regroup. Look at this. So each of these I cut out, I inked them with like a hot pink so that they would stand out against this background. I also added some paint splatter so that again, it kind of, I don't know, add some interest, I think. And then I inked all the edges of my matting too and my banners, but all of these prints, other than this 12 by 12, is from this month's kit. So to give you an idea, this polka dot, things like that. And it just didn't take a lot of extra embellishments to make a completed, adorable farm country page. Then, this one's maybe a little bit fancier. I added a lot of Prima marketing flowers onto this one, but the same technique. These are more of those honeycombs. I made this and this were two full prints that I just took apart, and I still have extra. So if you wanna make a card, things like that with your extras. Cute, right? This has little macarons, fabulous. Oh my gosh, I just love it. It's so delicious. I don't bake or cook. But I did pull my husband from the kitchen while he was cooking to show him what I cooked up that afternoon. But I'm holding for the applause, the laughs. Should I just go on? <laughs> well, the laughs not be coming. Okay, look at these. Look at these. Okay, so for fussy cutting, one tip I wanted to share with you, and I've shared it on another fussy cutting specific video that I've posted. You could check it out there if you want to see more about fussy cutting is when working with printables, you're going to want a very sharp craft knife and some tiny detail scissors. These are a must have in your stash. You will use them a lot. If you really like fussy cutting, you're gonna love working with printable kits. If you don't, you know, there's other crafts. Check out my other videos. <laughs> Just move on. Cross stitching, maybe that's your thing, I don't know. But with the tip I wanted to share that I use a lot and has been a game changer for me is cutting the interior of any printable first. It will make your life so much easier and you're so much less likely to 
rip into those finer details. I'll show you, I have a spoon that I cut out. I'll show you on that one. So sharp blade is also very necessary. I've tried to skimp on that before thinking, oh, I don't really need a sharp blade. You do, because you're just gonna shred your paper and you're gonna end up pushing so hard to make it cut that it's probably fairly dangerous, I'm gonna go ahead and say. And then the other tip is, rotate your paper versus rotating your hand. That is a lifesaver and it gives you so much more precision on your cutting. And then you just use it like a pencil, tracing your outline as you go. And then when you're done, It just pops out. Okay? Super easy. Just like that. Now you can go ahead and cut with your smaller scissors all that exterior section without having to worry about cutting into these smaller ribbons. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me show you here on this layout, which I think ended up being my favorite. I love this color palette. It's kind of bold. I love gingham, as I mentioned. And these printables, I just, yes, this is my favorite one. So what I did with this, you could see all the fussy cutting here, all the details, and then the pie. These were each printed at, I think, a five by seven size. But the other tip I wanted to share with you is glossy accents. I talked about this on Facebook this weekend. If you've never heard about this product, I still believe it's probably one of the most underrated paper crafting products because it is magical and it's useful for so many images, papers, kids crafts. This will dry super high gloss, puffy, okay? This is great on eyeballs. So if you have a cute, let's say Halloween monster image, put this on top of the eyeballs and you have like a Google eye effect. Someone on my Facebook page mentioned that she uses it on shells, snow, anything you wanna give life to. Because as you may know, if you work with printables, sometimes they can be very flat as opposed to some of the embellishments that you would buy in maybe a kit or flowers or things like that. So I like to give them a little life. And I'll hold this up so maybe you could see. It's harder to see on video. See that shine on the apple? Let me show you the pie. See the pie there? I put them on the apples here. On several of my pages, I put them on the strawberries, anything with frosting. It makes them look so lifelike. I had somebody ask me if this was a sticker the other day, and I said, no, it's just printables. So what you do is it's super easy. You just apply it pretty liberally to whatever you want to stand up and be shiny. It's gonna look somewhat milky until it dries. I don't know if you can see that there. The only tip for using this, and I'll have a link to this in my shop, or in my uh, description, okay? Is if you see air bubbles, which I don't see here, but every once in a while there will be air bubbles. They will dry with that bubble on it. So you're gonna want to poke it while it's wet to get rid of that so that you don't see it. Okay, I think I actually have one here because I didn't do that. But it's okay, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'll just be our secret. So that's one more tip with printables. I use this product all the time. It's just really cool and sometimes it's difficult to know how to embellish with printables because they're already so busy and interesting on their own but you still want to give it like something. You know what I'm saying? Like it needs something. That's a good product to use. So let me show you. Let me show you another one. So this is another one in which I used, same collection, the glossy accents on my cupcake. And one more thing while we're talking about printables, it is so important to have a really, really good printer and cardstock when working with printables. It makes a huge difference. This is Nina cardstock that I printed all of these things. And I'll have a link to the cardstock weight and to the printer I use in the description if you're interested or shopping for those kinds of things for your own use. Cute, right? And then 
Another thing, let's talk about printables. Printables are great. They're a great go-to for card making. One challenge you may find is if you have a standard printer, like I do. I don't have a big 12 by 12 printer. The biggest print I can make is an eight and a half by 11. Well, my scrapbook is 12 by 12. So what I have found is making my own backgrounds has been kind of my go-to. Now sometimes, like in this one, you'll have a matching 12 by 12 in your stash, great. But what about when you don't? Also, sometimes they can be distracting from all of the glory in your prints. So I'm gonna show you two ways in which I make my own background cardstock. First of all, look at this page. This is like deluxe. I think I did this one second and it was just, <laughs> it's a collage and a half. I layered flowers here. Look at, there's more of that glossy. See, I'm gonna try to tilt it. Sometimes when it catches right, you can see it better. Rhinestones, watercolors. This is like an explosion of sugar on this page. Love it. Here's the spoon I, I was gonna mention. Look, see this detail work? That is only possible when something is this small when you do the interior first. Trust me, I've chopped a lot of ribbons. I've chopped a lot of butterfly antenna, you name it. I have cut them off. And then it's just like, oh, we'll just, we're just gonna put a flower right there. <laughs> we're just gonna put a little make a bow, plop it right on there. You could always like fix it, but it definitely is easier to cut your interiors first. So I'm gonna show you how I made this background. That'll be my first project. With that, I used these semi-moist metallic watercolors. I wish I could actually watercolor, but instead I just make backgrounds that you can't mess up. So I used some basil cardstock because it's super heavy. Can you hear how heavy that is? It's like a thunder noise in a movie. You could also use watercolor paper. They do sell them in 12 by 12 too, but I like the basil brand, it just works. And then this watercolor, although you could use any, but I like this because it's metallic. So it kind of gives you a softer finish once it dries. See that? The reason I like using something like this for my backgrounds on printables, and if you've been to my website or my eBay shop, you've probably seen a lot of layouts that look similar to this style. It's because I don't wanna take away from the printables but I didn't want just a stark white background that doesn't kind of hold them in. So what I like about this technique is you can easily color match. And again, you can't mess it up. So the first thing you wanna do with watercolors is to spray them down with water. For this, I used pink and I used a little bit of this like yellow. And you wanna really saturate it because we're gonna splatter. And then you're just gonna get a brush. I feel like smaller brushes work best. And simply dip and flick. Super easy, right? This is a great technique for any kind of mixed media page. It adds so much interest to your layout and it's so easy. <laughs> so I typically use a different brush for a new color now with watercolors too, the great thing is when you're done, you just close your palette box here. They dry just like new. So when you're happy with it, you're done. That's the rule. I'm happy with it, I'm done. You can add some more when you've finished your collage, but it gets a little bit trickier just because you don't want to necessarily splatter over the top. So in that case, I just try to cover and then do my splatter if I'm gonna add. Okay, so that's my first background technique. Super easy. Again, you can't mess up splatter because it just looks amazing. And if you don't like a section, you just put your little strawberry cake right there. Super easy. So the next thing I wanted to show you was how I made this background. This is a watercolor background. I used Magicals by Lindy's Gang. I have several videos about Lindy's Gang Magicals too because they're amazing. You probably know if you've used them, please let me know. These are amazing. I use them all the time. Sometimes I don't even make layouts. I just spray them on paper and I'm happy for like days. 
So again, any kind of cardstock, but you definitely want a thicker one because you're going to be adding water. So this is called Pretty in Pink Pink, and I also used black on this one, but I thought I'd just mix in some, what is this called? Alpine Ice Rose, just because I thought it was pretty. So what you do, they either come in shakers, see here where they have like a salt shaker top, and they also have like an open side, Be careful with that, especially if you have kids, and then these, which are like paint pots, they're all powdered paints. Super easy to use. What you want to do is lift a little bit and just kind of put it around where you want. You could use your finger. You could move it however much you want when it's dry. Okay. A little bit goes a long way as I post a lot on here, but really you don't need to put this much. This is just a thicker brush. So do what I say, not what I do is what I'm saying. And then let's put a little, oh, maybe I'll show you this after we do this one. So the cool thing about powdered pigments is to make this pink, you would actually put some in water, mix it up. You're going to get a true pink. If you sprinkle it like this, you're actually going to see all the little color variations that together make this pink, which is cool. So once you've put your, your magic where you want it, you're going to take a spray bottle and... Look at that. Yeah, this is, you know how some people do like relaxing things like combing the sand or like, I don't know, cutting paper strips. I don't know what, people, what do people do for relaxing. I crossed it, I crossed it. That's relaxing. This is also so relaxing. You feel like this instant zen, but also like, like, I don't know, some really great coffee or something. Look at how cool this is. Oh man, okay, I get distracted with this stuff just because it's really quite awesome. But as you can see, we talked about the different pigments in there. See, there's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of like a dark brown, which I like. You could also use this, again, as a watercolor. Put a little of this in some water and paint with it, just like a watercolor. So you could do this for your, you know, your little uh, splotchy poos here too. Same thing, if you wanted to make this a liquid first, it would work just as well. Oh man, okay, so now let's try this one, the Alpine Ice Rose. I'm just gonna add some, maybe around the side. And this you just use like a little salt shaker. Just to give me a little something different. This one's a little bit more of a peachy. It might be hard to tell because that pink is pretty bold. Maybe I'll do it down here so you can see better. My kids love using these. Yeah, this is a little bit more of a peach. Ooh, it's cute. So if you have kids too, this is a great project idea for kids who like to work with canvases or watercolor. Um, monitor, maybe, depending on their age. Mine are quite young because they will put the entire thing on there in one like volcano, which is also fun, but it's a very brief project. <laughs> and then you're buying more stuff. So, so that's how I made my backgrounds for this one and this one. And I find that this technique really helps me use my own printables but in a much bigger canvas. So what do you think? I thought it, those are some things that really came to my mind. Now, when it comes to like jazzing up your printables, you can also use things like glitter. You could also use things like ribbons. You could tie a little ribbon on here. You could tie a little ribbon on there, put some rhinestones, depending on the style of your printable. The only downside I have with glitter sometimes, it can mask over the details in your illustration. So unless you use like a diamond stickles, which dries clear, but just gives you the glittery look. And I do use that a lot. So th those are my techniques. That's kind of what I've been working on today. And I'll have a link to my eBay shop too if you like these. These are all available now in my store. So, and they're ready to ship. So if one was just too yummy and you have like that picture of you making cookies with grandma or just eating cookies with your grandma, <laughs> you could put those on there. These are, I mean, that's it. You just add your photos, put it in your album, put these in a shadow box. This would be a cute one in a shadow box. Um, leave me your comments. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, again, all the products I'll put 
down below if you want more details on how to use it or other ideas let me know too because we're still in social distance year so I have a lot of time at home so ask me a lot of questions please just tell me how you're doing reach out what are you reading what are you watching what's going on where do you live whatever questions this is the time for us to bond okay so um, be sure to subscribe to my channel uh, ring the bell share with your friends Check it out. Try it out. Let's make some stuff. Bye.